want to start this lecture, this speech, with one question. Who got excited about new pliers that we are going to buy? Somebody? I bought it three days ago in Poland. Nobody. Okay, that's bad. But most of us are getting excited about new innovations that appear on the market. We are waiting for new cell phones. We want new technological items. But honestly speaking, we have to understand that we are getting excited not about items. We are getting excited about the new processes that I we are able to do with those new interesting items. Today I'm going to talk about robotic world. This industrial robotic world is very interesting on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's very mysterious for most of us. We are afraid about robots. So let me talk today about how industrial processes are going to change in next years and what is going to be our role, the role of us humans in those industrial processes. First of all, we have to start with the market needs. Right now, my market has changed. We customers want products that are available, we want the short delivery time, we want innovative products, we want the products that appear every two, three years on the market. And the most important change right now is that we want the customized products. So original idea of Henry Ford that customers are going to buy only the black cars is not valid anymore. Right now, we don't want to buy any more uh, black cars. So today, I want to show you one small change that's going to happen in industry that radically redefines the future of, of uh, factories, the future of industrial world. So let me take you for a short tour through industry. Right now, we engineers work for the last 40 years on, robotic and or on robotization and automation. This is something right now we reach the level of excellence. We are able to create a sophisticated robotic lines that are locked in the cages because robots are very efficient, very fast and dangerous for us. But we are able to handle those powers and we are able to create a sophisticated robotic lines that produce great products. But this robotic world is also able to be designed in a virtual environment. So we are engineers are able to check how the factory works in virtual environments. That's not the future, that's the reality right now. But we have to understand that robots cannot collaborate with us. So we engineers, we had a dreams. It's hard to believe, but we had a dreams. So that's a dream of collaborations. We want to collaborate with robots. So the collaboration with robots right now is a reality. We are able to we, we develop cobots, collaborative robots. They are not so efficient, but they are not dangerous for us, for humans. We also made possible a mobile platform, something called AGVs. They are robots that are able to navigate freely inside of the factory. Uh, so we are able to deliver goods in an automatic way from the warehouses to the production lines. The biggest difference between traditional automation and cobots and automated guided vehicles that AGVs accept that the world is not perfect. The robotic lines requires 100% of determinism. The robots are able to interact with us. Let me say they are able to think softly, they react with us, but in the same time they are able to enter the cages where robots are locked in. So they connect those two worlds. They are kind of middleware. Right now, we also have got a new senses, something called Internet of Things. Right now, we are able to produce thousands of small sensors that are able to gather the data from various sources. We are able to m trace the production processes. So traceability right now is a standard. We are able to measure thousands of parameters about our cars, so everything is, can be tested. And later on, we are able to backtrace. That's also not a future, that's reality right now. So we may say, wow, we've got a perfect tools, we've got a perfect robotic lines, we are able to create a perfect products. So is it still place for us humans inside of that environment? To give that answer, let me show you a backstage, because the backstage is a bit more interesting. Uh, on the backstage, first of all, we have to understand that those sophisticated lines are designed to produce the specific product. They are not flexible. 
we, any smallest change in the product specification requires the change in the robotic lines. The second, the traditional automation and robotization requires, is not flexible. They are, robots are not cognitive at all. Any, even smallest change, any disruption is just me means that lines should have to be stopped. And two issues at the end. Uh, we have to understand that we still produce the goods according to the idea of Henry Ford. We still produce according to the pipeline production. So we, of course, we've got a new tools, but the process is still the same. And finally, this is something that Josh told at the beginning. There are two separated worlds. The world of robots, really efficient, but very dangerous for us humans, and the world of us humans. And we cannot, inter we cannot work together because the robots are just too dangerous for us. So right now, this is a time for radical change because we customers are going to destroy that perfect robotic world because of customization. Everybody needs a different products. We want the products that are produced locally. So we are going to destroy this perfect deterministic world. So how to handle with our problems? This is the need of flexible factories, flexible manufacturing, and it's called radical automation. We have to change the way we think about factory. We have to consider the factory as a set of tools that we have, exactly as we've got a screwdrivers, hammers, and other stuff in our basements. And the connection between those, two, between those tools have to be flexible. That is this change. Let me show you how we are going to do that change. All tools are already on the market. Right now, the production goes on that conveyor, more or less, this is a very simple diagram. But we are able to change that by replacing a conveyor by mobile platforms, those autonomous guided vehicles. And this small change redefines the production. Why? Because we are not stuck anymore with fixed conveyors. The path of the product to the factory can be right now changed constantly. So we are able to produce the uh, customized products because we are not stuck anymore. This is the idea of, of a virtual conveyor. So we still are able to move through factory from the one robotic station to another, but connections are flexible. And the small change, yes, redefines the production. Right now we are going to talk about something called polymorphic factory. The factory that is able to morph. The factory consists of, I hope the laser is working. Okay, factory consists of several production points. One of them are robotized according to the traditional automation. On some other, we are able to collaborate together with products, uh, with cobots. So we are able, because of AGVs, to define a different roads for different products through the, such a factory. We are also able to use, use a CNC machines, 3D printing. So right now we are not fixed anymore with non-elastic pro processes through the factory. The AGVs gave us connections between the productions, production points. The small change means that we are able to define a several parallel processes that goes through the factory, several production processes that goes through the factory. Let me give you a, an example that we probably will make it a bit more clear. Oh, sorry. So right now, this small change, we may compare to change that happened years ago in IT. The factory shop floor is going to be an operating system for production exactly as we got on our cell phones. The functions of our cell phones are not limited right now, or maybe, sorry, are limited right now by applica applications that we are able to execute, that we are able to download. So this, the change that radical automation gives us is means that the production process is just going to be an application that we are going to execute on the factory. Right now, I want to mention Artificial intelligence. Artificial in intelligence is, is the final, final element of radical automation. Let me tell you, artificial intelligence is a myth. Artificial intelligence do not exist because it's not creative. 
it gives us a possibility for analysis of data. Right now, we've got a new census, IoT, so we, gather, we get much more data than in the past. But we need some engines that are able to analyze those data. So we need something called artificial intelligence. That, that small change gives us a possibility of, of creating something called decision support system. The final decision is going to be done by us, by humans. Because in polymorphic factory, the borders between robotic areas and human operated areas just fade because the connection are done be with the AGVs, which are middleware. So the analysis of data is required for decision support system. We have to decide how to deal with uh, problems that may occur in complex system in the polymorphic factory. So radical automation builds a new cognitive interface around us humans. Our senses are augmented because of IoT, so we've got a sense augmentation. Our intelligence is also augmented by artificial intelligence because we are, we've got a, a decision support system. And right now we have to understand that those digital technologies eliminate human error from factories, but we are still able right now to use our intelligence to manage the factory. Right now, we are supporting robots in the production processes. The change makes possible that robots are going to support us. So right now, we are going to be supp supp supplemented, sorry, supplemented by technological innovations. The polymorphic factory makes possible that we are able to integrate a new technologies in the factory because we are not stuck anymore with fixed connection. We're just adding a new tools exactly as we are going to buy a new tool for our basement. <coughs> so right now, we are back in the middle. This small change means that we are going to rule the robots and not we are going to be ruled by the robots. So because we are in the middle, you are welcome in the world of radical automation. Thank you so much. If somebody wants pliers, you are welcome. <laughs>